This video is sponsored by one of the best photography programs out there, Capture One. beautiful, vibrant New York City. We came all the way from Toronto and we're just shooting some photos. It's our first day exploring the city, so I thought this would be a fun little experiment to let's test some primes side by side. Let's figure out if you're heading out with one lens for the day, shooting some street photography, which prime lens would be best for you? Is it the 24, is it the 35, or is it the 50? So we're gonna start out with a 35 F 1.4 and we'll see how it goes. We'll tell you our pros and cons of both. Nice. It's a good skateboarder. Oh, yes, that's nice. I got it. Don't worry. She's just snapping so many photos aimlessly. Thirty-five is actually kind of like it's it's nice, but you have to get really close to what you're shooting, and I feel uncomfortable on the street getting that close close to people you know what I mean like I don't want to go up to someone right in their face you have to you have to <laughs> do I though <laughs> it's real it's truly giving it is giving something That was a really cool moment because we found some cool light to play with and Emma sat down and she posed a little bit and that was pretty easy for me to get right up and close and like have a moment to cultivate the shot, if you will. But if I were just walking by someone random unless I actually asked for permission, that would be a little challenging. I would say it's great for shoots in which you have a model that you're working with. For run and gun stuff, what I really am liking is if you're shooting like a building across the street and you want something really parallel kind of straight on clean lines rule of thirds if you will then that's where the 35 really wins you get a beautiful wide not too wide it's not distorted and you can shoot from across the street you're not disturbing anyone and great for architecture overall that's kind of what I'm what I'm feeling but I don't know if this is the one I would pick personally I know a lot of other people do but for running gun just a full day I don't know if this is it that does look like popcorn chicken I'm going for that one. The artichoke looks crazy. The mac and cheese looks nuts. So cute! Oh wow. It's no secret on this channel that 35 millimeter is my favorite focal length of all time. But here's why I struggle with it a little bit for street photography. I like having people in my photos. That's just the way it is. And when I'm trying to shoot people that aren't necessarily a model I'm working with, graciously, Emma stepped in and, you know, moodled a little bit for us. But when I don't have that, it's tough. Uh, I can get some kind of architectural photos of buildings, some abstract things. Like if you're just documenting your day just to to like pick up a camera and shoot and make sure that everything is in your photo run and gun travel style then the 35 is for you and this is the one that's going to make the most sense on your camera but if you're trying to get some more artistic nat if you're trying to get some more artistic natural authentic street photography then i'm going to recommend something a little bit tighter which is why i'm really keen to switch to the 50 mil right now Quick pause, we gotta talk about the company that made this video possible, and that is Capture One. As a photographer myself, I am always looking for more tools that are going to make my workflow more effective and efficient so that I can focus more on my craft. Now, full disclosure, I have used Capture One. I don't have a ton of experience with it, but when Capture One approached me to make this video and showed me some of the features that Capture One 23 offers, I was blown away. So I figured, why not share some of those amazing features with you, my friends? So first of all, there are smart adjustments. Now, smart adjustments are a quick and easy way to match the exposure and white balance across like a large batch of images. This would be perfect for portrait sessions or event photography where the lighting and color temperatures are just constantly changing. All you do is set a reference image with a visible face that has the desired white balance and exposure. And then this can be batch applied to all of your other images. So you can even save this smart adjustment as a 
smart style, which can be applied to any future images as well. Next, there are a bunch of upgrades to culling and importing. As someone who travels a lot and then takes so many photos, like thousands of photos on a trip, coming home, importing them, and then having to select my favorites is the most time consuming and also my least favorite part of the editing process. <laughs> now, some of the improvements in Capture 123 include zero delay browsing, the ability to see similar images like in a group view, changing the capture time in case one of your cameras was set incorrectly and you need to sync them up in post and honestly so much more. Lastly, and this is my favorite, layers in styles. And now this is something I've been wanting in other applications that we will not name. And I am so excited that this exists in Capture 123. When saving a style, you can include layers that each has a predefined opacity and can be increased or decreased as necessary. So in theory, I could have just one layer for skin tones, a layer for background adjustments, et cetera, et cetera. Like I mentioned before, Capture One is still pretty new to me, but I was super stoked to edit all of these images in Capture 123, and I had a great time doing it and testing out all the new features. Now, thank you so much Capture One for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to it. All right, so now let's shoot a little bit tighter. I have my camera on silent shooting as well. That's another tip if you're trying to get some secret straight photography so that nobody really knows when you're taking your photo. Also kind of walking with your eye up and close to the eyepiece will hide the fact that you're taking their photo because they can't see where you're looking or where you're pointing it. They just think as you're walking by them that you're continuing to maybe take a photo or maybe you're looking at something else. So then they don't have the opportunity to change their reaction or tell you no or have any, any friction. You get that authentic moment right away. So silent shooting is key. noticing that when shooting with the 50, it's making my life a little bit easier. I can definitely take sneakier photos. I love the compression I'm getting. So with a longer lens, it's really going to bring everything in the background a bit closer to your subject, really compress the shot. And that's why you get that nice bokeh, that nice blur in the background. Now with that said, if you are close to someone, then you're gonna have to step back and find that if you're looking for that wider angle, you're gonna have to get back and you may literally back yourself into a wall at some times where you can't actually fit everything into the frame. That's just something to keep in mind. If you're a wide angle person, maybe reach for the 35. If you're, gonna, if you're an architectural person, maybe reach for the 35. But if you're focusing on details and you're focusing on subjects and people, then I would say the 50 prime may be a better option for you. It's all organic? Open it. Oh, yeah. oh, oh thank you. This is perfect for details. So I'm shooting through some chicken at people working in the store right now. If you found something a little more aesthetic, you too could do that with a 50. <laughs> so, a really interesting thing you can do, I mean with this lens and the 35, but it's a little bit easier with this lens, is you can use anything in the foreground to now frame your subject, whether it's a sign, a person, an action, whatever, like say this motorcycle. And I can get really low. I can use the seat of the motorcycle to kind of cover up this dead space with the road, and I can frame this fruit stand off in the distance. I mean, this is something you can do with a 35 as well. It's just a little bit easier and you get a little more depth and compression with that 50. Sorry, I need a, I, I'm gonna need that. Had a 
great time with the 50. It really helped me get some nice secret shots of some subjects, passers-by. I don't know, I'm kind of leaning towards the 50. Could work for your family pictures throughout the day and your documenting. Uh, you would have to be a little bit more careful to make sure that everything is in frame with you because it is that little bit tighter. And obviously you can't have someone a little too close to the lens because then they're going to be out of focus because of that minimum focus distance. So just a few things to keep in mind if this is the one you're choosing with for your daily carry. And now let's switch to the 24. So we're going all the way back to like super wide now. Initially, I'm stoked to be using this because this is a super lightweight lens. <laughs> Just choked on my spit. That's great. <laughs> Overall, I'm really stoked to be shooting with this lens because it is really lightweight and it is a pretty small form factor. And you can get some really cool, interesting portraits with this, but you're never gonna miss a shot with this, that's for sure. I'm just gonna go for a walk like this. Please let me know if I'm gonna run into anything. Everyone looks so much further away than they actually are. Stretched, and this is how close she is. It feels really close. It does, but it looks it looks cute. Oh yeah, that is a nice one. Okay. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. We're going into the subway now to go home because our dogs are barking and to shoot in the subway, but mostly our dogs are barking. shots with the 24 is that anything that's close to the lens is going to look larger. Anything that's further away from it is going to look really small. So if you're shooting down a corridor kind of like this, shooting down the tracks, you put the camera at kind of an angle, it's going to make all of these columns look really large and everything down there look really small and really far away, giving the illusion that this is a really long haul and gets really small and really big. So like the distortion can work for the effect of the image. Overall, it's definitely an artistic choice, I think, to carry this around for the day because it's not necessarily the most practical choice unless you are taking, as with the 35 more like architectural photos, but even more with a bit of that creative look because of that distortion. Thank you. 